Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we have something special for you today. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, today's stream is gonna be uh, split in two parts. First of all, we, we're going to be running a couple of decks against uh, the one and only Luis Salvato, you can see here. So we're going to, to, to get this uh, sorted out. Making sure that he's ready. Uh, so we're gonna try a couple of decks against him on blue white on blue white control. He's trying to test for uh, the Pro Tour in Barcelona, which is going to be modern. And uh, I'm just going to give uh, you know try to give him a hand. Uh, after we're, we're gonna stop at 4 p.m. and after that I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm gonna do like a quick uh, quick break probably like 10 15 minutes i need to take care of a phone call and then we will be back with a league with uh, some devoted amulet so if you are if you are hoping to see some amulet content fear not you will see it soon enough uh, you will just have to wait probably around 420 or 430 um and we we will will make it happen for sure uh, but for to begin, uh, we are going to start. I was thinking on. I was thinking about starting with a bridge vine to to start things off, and then we are probably going to be looking at uh, El Tracitron. And if we have enough time for a third deck, I was thinking of uh, maybe either Hardened Scales or something uh, along those lines. So. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just here, I'm waiting for, maybe I'm just going to text him so he, <laughs> so he realizes, he realizes that we are, we're waiting for him over here, uh, but this is actually, we're going to change the stream title. All right. So I'm not going to be able to, you know, update the, the, the deck list command. If anybody wants to check out the deck list, all you need to do is just like say something in chat. I will show you the deck list real quick while we go through it. Uh, these are not going to be my lists. Again, I am not a Hogak master. I am not an Adrasitron master or anything like that. So we are basically going, I, I just like copied and pasted somebody else's list. So uh, Luis says he's ready. So... Let's uh, let's get started. Gonna start with some Hogak. Uh, challenge player with. All right. Um, all right, sweet. That worked. Uh, make sure that everything is in frame. Seems like it is. Seems like it is. All right, let's do it. Hmm, interesting hand. So this hand needs like either a faithless looting or something like that. Um, I think you're supposed to keep hands like this. Having our one-off basic swamp, it's kind of brutal. Maybe because of the new mulligan rule, I'm supposed to ship a hand like this nowadays. Yeah, we can probably do better than this. Um, this hand is much better. We can bring this Dark Blast down. We can discard probably Vengevine and Bridge on turn one. Try to get our, our uh, Vengevine back afterwards. So we're definitely we're se definitely sending the Dark Blast to the bottom. Um, actually, are we? Maybe I'm just sending the Hogak to the bottom. Because we can dredge with Dark Blast. And I can like trigger. Nah, I can, I can trigger. Yeah, I can trigger with seven. Yeah, so it's going to be. It's going to be like this. Alright, so they kept seven. It's not bad. Definitely not bad. Uh, so we're going to be able to bring back Venge Vine next turn. Yeah, we're. I think we're going to be. We're going to be looking pretty good here. See what we draw. <laughs> We're becoming the boogeyman. Uh, I mean, this is this is just an exception. Don't think that this is going to be the rule. 
Um, so I think can I get Vengevine? Uh, can I get a uh, Hogai gameplay? I don't think I can. So I can play this. I sack, but I want to get the Vengevine back. So I guess I cannot really do that. So we're gonna get the Carrion Feeder. And then we're going to we're going to cast the grave crawler. This will get our revenge fine back. Probably get surge gold maybe. That's why Luis is is awaiting. Uh, if Vengevine does get Surgical though, we kind of have the engine set up of Feeder plus Gravecrawler with the bridge in the yard. So this seems like a strong start anyway. Yeah, so the, the Vengevines are going to be gone. If it doesn't get banned, I'm buying it. So I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... I think it's possible that it's correct to Surgical the Vengevine there. Uh, he probably wants to Surgical the Bridges as well. Alright, and we just passed the turn here. Of course we're gonna sack the Great Trawler if, if Luis chooses to like go for a path or something, but yeah. Yeah, but I I don't want to like my my engine is actually very powerful. I don't think I want to I want to sacrifice the grave crawler to p to put a hogak into play because if I do that, then my opponent just paths my hogak and I'm left with like a couple of sombos and nothing else. Uh, while this is an engine that my opponent needs to stop, right? Uh, because otherwise, I just like keep casting and I keep casting grave trawler and sacking it to the feeder. Like they need to answer my engine right here. Otherwise, it's going to become uh, a little bit too much for them. So I don't think that uh, putting Hogak into play is better than uh, me keeping this engine going. I mean, we drew a second grave crawler, so now this is worse. But so they're gonna surgical the bridge. Yeah, so I think I sack the grave crawler for sure. We're gonna get a zombie. And we're gonna be able to recast this guy to In fact we can we can probably Hogak here. I am kind of interested in getting some damage in though, because uh, soon enough my opponent is going to have access to uh, to have access to a sweeper. So I can, uh, I guess we're going to start here. We recast this guy. We swing. We can cast this. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough to cast Hogak this turn. Okay. Yeah, th them having the turn one surgical turn two snappy, it's, it's pretty bad for us. I guess I could have played out the other dude to to deal one more damage. That was probably worth it. So this is one mana short. It's too bad that this deck is so absurdly broken because it's super cool. Uh, Captain Winehead, thank you for the follow. Um, like it, it's it's extremely hard to play. There's so many lines and so many possibilities all the time, and it's just really, really sweet. So it makes me sad that it's broken and it's probably going to get banned because it kind of has to get banned. Um, but like, I wish I could play it and it would just like be one more deck, you know. Oh, so we can actually cast Hogak here with, like, through a Logic Knot. It gets countered by... It gets countered by... Uh, by a Mana Leak. Uh, 
All right, sweeper or bust? Oh, I, I made a mistake. I should have sacked the Stitcher suppliers there. Yeah, I definitely should have. Yeah, I, I could have attacked for so much more damage. Yeah, I, I messed it up there. I messed it up for sure. Ah, that kind of sucks. And this deck is hard to play. Yeah, I, I, I just played that turn wrong for sure. I played that turn wrong for sure. All right, so here's the sweeper. Because otherwise they die, so... Um... Some zombie. Another carry of feeder would be nice. Minimum on a sliver deck, that's pretty damn good. Sweep up the Oh, well, all right. Yep, that's that's a very good draw. Grave crawler. <laughs> this deck is fucking dumb. This deck is so dumb. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Well, you sweep me on turn four. Now face my eleven, my twelve. Uh, no, that's that's more. That's their thirteen power. That's ridiculous. This deck is so dumb. They, they need to ban this. <laughs> like, do you have a second sweeper? Because if you don't, you lose. That's not a second sweeper. I have lethal here. I guess they can draw into land plus path. I can draw into land plus path, I guess. Now the question is, let's see that they found something. Let's assume that they did find something. Um, do we go for broke? Or... Or do we attack... Uh, or do we attack the, the Jace with Crawler? And the feeder. Um, I could also looting. I think I want to hold on to this in order to set up for next turn. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to send the feeder at the Jace. And then Hogak and these other two at them, uh, which is effectively lethal because at that point. Oh, remind me, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still, <laughs> this is still an English stream, I guess. Um, as always, if, if anybody has a question in Spanish, I will answer in Spanish, but overall, I'd rather, I'd rather speak in English, just so, you know, m more people can understand me. Um, we're gonna get this guy back. Um, then we're going to sack this again. Uh, basically, my goal here is to try to get them uh, to try to get him below ten. So next turn, the uh, the blood ghasts can come back and be hasty. So this is gonna go face. This is gonna go jace. This is gonna go face. This is gonna go face. Like they they have to have a path basically. They have to have a path or they just like straight up lose, so. <clears throat> I 
Yep. Okay. So they do have the path. We're definitely sacking this in response. So he takes four. Jay's down. Only three cards left in hand. Next turn we can bring bring back the hasty the hasty blood ghasts. If we want to. You have to remember that this is turn uh, turn one, uh, uh, Luis ex uh, surgical my bench vines. Turn two, he surgical my bridges, and this is still like the position that we're putting him. They they verdicted uh, when I had lethal on board. <laughs> this this deck is this deck is something else. This deck really is something else. Like they they literally need to have another sweeper right here. Otherwise, we just win. Yeah, they literally have everything, and we are still, like, winning easily. Like, I, I even made a couple of mistakes along the way, and we are still, like, insanely far ahead. Um, okay. So I guess he needed to draw into double path, I think. So now we're going to play a land. We're going to attack with all the blood ghasts. Uh, he doesn't have cryptic mana, so he needs to have something like snap path or something or whatever. Um, yeah, martial arts is not bad actually. Let's start there. This lets me play around another surgical, or simply it allows me to bring my ghasts back later. <laughs> this is insane. So he's probably gonna path the carrion feeder, block one of this, and take six down to two. <clears throat> uh, never mind. They are taking eight down to zero. Yeah, this is. This is dumb. That was that was just stupid. All right, we're bringing Nature's Claim because uh, they will be bringing in um, Rest in Peace probably for copies. Uh, Dark Blast can come out. A couple of Venge Vines can come out as well. Uh, Lightning Axe can come out, and maybe one Hogak. Maybe something like this. <clears throat> I'm not very sure how to sideboard, obviously, because this is like literally my first match with the deck. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that something like like it's not very likely that we're gonna get to like combo them out. So I'm not sure about this, but we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, there will be uh, there will be some oh really all right so we'll bring back the altar so what do we take out instead like one bridge because I feel like I definitely want the blood guests uh, we're gonna be playing we're gonna be playing some prime times later today I'm going to take a break at 4 p.m. And then I will come back afterwards with, uh, I, I will come back afterwards with um, <clears throat> with some devoted amulet. Uh, this hand seems excellent. Definitely expecting turn two rip. One of every graveyard card. Okay, sweet. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Rulevoren. So I think we looting here, trying to get a green source, sweet. And I think I don't mind getting my veg veg vine exiled, and probably this black cliff cliffs. I definitely want to hold on to this. I'm expecting them to play um, to play rip hunter too. 
Carrion Feeder is insane. Blood Gas is also very good. When do we claim the rip? That's a great question. I think that I'm going to... No, because if I do it in their upkeep, they are for sure... Like, I, I'm expecting, like, Force of Negation, and I'm also expecting Spell Pierces. Maybe they don't have Dovin's Veto, but... Um, maybe at their end step is the correct place, is the correct time to do it. End step sound like, sounds like a good time to do it. I think I'm going to discard the land. I, I guess I'm going to discard the blood guest. Because I'm, I'm, I guess the bridge. Because I'm still interested in, in them playing the rip on two, right? So... Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the bridge. It's possible that should have been either the blood gas or the cliffs. I think that I definitely want to keep these four cards. So it's possible that it, it was one of these. Yeah. So there's the rest in peace. Uh, that's not terrible. Yeah. So. I think I'm just going to slam it right now. Because it's less likely for them to have this than for them to... Whoops. Alright. Didn't have it. Sweet. So if, if I was going to do that, I guess I needed to... No, never mind. I needed to like play my land first. Now, nah, I think that was fine. I think that was fine. The sequencing was okay. So this guy is not going to be hasty, so we're definitely going to... Oh, click. Okay. That is that is a clock. Vendillion, Vendillion clock. This card is so good. I love Vendillion click. I could have uh, discarded the, the ghastly response. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yes, we do this. We discard. If they had ripped, they would have played it there. So I think I'm gonna. Now nah, I'm gonna discard the catacombs. Actually, punished. Punished. I I think I missed on one point of damage there. Jace, that is a Jace. Oh, nice spikes! Yeah, I totally missed that. I totally missed that. Yeah, you you're definitely correct. So I don't I I think I'm going to attack with the blood gas at Jace. They're probably gonna take it. And now we flashback looting. Nice. Okay, okay, so this is good. Uh, we're gonna ditch this and this and pass the turn. So 
So we have the answer to to another rest in peace. Uh, he can field my tomb and then play the rest in peace. That would be annoying. Uh, but besides that, we should be good. And next turn, we can like supplier. Uh, we only have one more Venge Vine in the. I mean, this is our last Venge Vine, basically, because we sided two of them out. So um, we're not gonna be able to get more than a single one. Now this deck is freaking sweet. I kind of love the fact that it's like there's so many possible lines and so many like it's very easy to make mistakes while playing this deck basically. I do think that in terms of power level it's a little bit too much. Like look look at like th that first game was a great example like <laughs> my opponent was playing main deck surgical in their control deck. Not something that they that they would do if they you know had the option to do, um, and we still beat them anyway. That's not bad at all. Let's lead on supplier first. <sighs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. No, that was that was that was pretty good. Not gonna lie. We get our revenge vine back. And now we pass. Go to attacks. I think I want to attack all of them at Jace. And whatever they block, I will sack to the carrion feeder. That's very important to know. Uh, we we destroyed our ancient tomb. Um, is it possible I want to sack everything in order to protect my bridges? I think I do. And then uh, I think I hold on to the carrion feeder though. And here, do I want to sack itself or? Um, I think I'm gonna get the basic swamp because I can get my back, I can get back my block cuts there. Uh, yes, uh, GGX member, it's any decks versus blue white. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna let this. Go. We already have 16 power. Actually, they're probably going to go into claim me, so I guess I sack itself as well. But why blue white broken? We know it. Because uh, 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 I'm helping Luis. Um, I'm helping Luis test for the, the PT. He's playing in Barcelona. Alright, so here comes what I expected. I feel so smart. Okay, so now this is an uncastable card. And now we get back the Bloodgast. If my opponent sweeps, then we're, at least we're going to be left with two Zombos. And we're still going to be left with the Carrion Feeder. Probably gonna bottom because they. Oh. 
Oh no, they 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 they, they use the field. If they rip me here, I think we we just lose. But if they don't rip me, then we're gonna be in a good spot. They only have three rips left. All right, so here comes a sweeper for sure. Oh, no. Interesting. Okay, that sucks, but it's fine. Here comes Vengevine again. So they're gonna have to cryptic here. And since they attack with the click, I expect them to cryptic here for sure. All right. Okay, so here they can probably get away with it. Uh, nobody plays Saddle anymore. I don't think I would play around Settle the Wreckage. They're for sure playing some number of sweepers though, that's that's one hundred percent. Like Wrath of God, Verdict, stuff like that. Nine cars in hand. <laughs> Man, the dealing looks so good. V click is so good. They took my thought sees and like they significantly slowed me down there. And it's it's made things like super awkward for me in terms of being able to like at instant speed get rid of my bridges. This card is so insane. But it's like at the perfect power level where it's just like extremely good, but it's it's just fine. It's not busted. We went through half of our deck and we have not seen a single hog act by the way. We did manage to flip all three of our bridges. <laughs> so I guess that party is lucky. Um, I... Ooh, they're going for the mana denial plan. Mentor. Okay. If they attack the if they attack here, then I will assume that they have it. That's a pretty sick draw. You, you they have to counter this. No, on the contrary, I I want to do this because otherwise they can like they can just chomp with tokens and they can get rid of my bridges. So by doing this, I'm forcing them to like if they are going to use like spell pierce or something like that, that is less mana for stuff like uh, path and whatnot. Uh, I mean, if they cryptic tap, I lose anyway because they just tap my dudes and then I they swing for lethal next turn. So I cannot be the cryptic. I cannot be the cryptic, so my plan is to like try to beat everything else basically.
Yep, there you go. And I assume they have snap paths. Celestial Purge, Purge in the Ghast. Okay, so this resolves, so I guess we just try to go for the win, right? Like my opponent has established their defenses. I guess I can do this after I attack. Like, I attack them. They're gonna block probably one, two, three, four. They're gonna take. That's eight zombies that go through that 16 damage. Whatever they block, I sack to the altar to mill myself. Yeah, they have 39 cards. I... This is... It's not enough. This is gonna be like 24... Uh, 24 plus 8, so that's 32. So that's not enough. So I need to flip Hogax. Now the question is, do I do, do I want to do this right now, or do I want to, do, do I want to do this post-combat? I think I go for it, right? Yeah, I think we should be... Um, Carcine Lever, it's blocked. Oh. Fixed. They have 39. Oh, Richen, we are, we're helping Luis uh, test for... Oh, that's, this is new. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so I think we're just going to go for it. And try to find one of our Hogax. There we go. Um, I don't think they can find anything. They can find surgical. So this is 8 plus 2, so this should be enough now, right? Yep. Yeah, this should be enough. That was pretty absurd. Wow, this deck is dumb. <laughs> this deck is so stupid. Um, okay, so let's try something else. Let's try let's try Etron. We're gonna give this one a shot and see what happens. Yeah, let, let's try, 
Let's try a Jurassic Tron and see, see how it goes. All right. A challenge with a Jurassic Tron. Man, this Hogak deck is something else. That definitely felt not okay. <laughs> that definitely felt not okay. Um, so you got a path to Tron and Chalice. And Luis Mulligan's the six. I just told him to not mold to surgical because <laughs> it's not gonna work out for them. Uh, that's probably not a bad draw. Now uh, it's very likely that Luis has a one-off, a one-off uh, dumping uh, detention sphere. Do we play around it or not? Do we play around the tension sphere or not? I think we do. Cause I could I could play the expedition map out for sure, right here, but I think this is fine. Alright, so they have the field. So we get the power plant, play the power plant, and chalice. This is mostly to, for to force the counter magic more than anything else. Okay, yeah, so they're, they're gonna go for like surgical, probably. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so they're going for the surgical. Of course, this doesn't, you know, this messes up my expedition map in hand, but that's probably, that's just fine. Uh, I'm interested in now trying to find my Cavern of Souls. But I think playing out the Chalice, it, specifically because of Surgical, I think that playing out the Chalice and uh, Path to Exile, of course, as well as uh, Opt, so they have like a bunch of cards that are very relevant in the matchup that I'm interested in blanking, basically. Okay. <clears throat> so now they have access to... That's... That's pretty brutal, actually. That is pretty brutal. Do I hold? I think I just jam, right? And I jam the Thought Knot. This can only get countered by Cryptic and Mana Leak, which is less likely for... Ooh, that resolved. Sick. Now I feel so smart. <laughs> ha! Ha ha. Ha ha. Um, I'm definitely getting the Verdict here. Snappy is not flashing back anything. Yep, so as I was saying, <laughs> Chalice of the Void is pretty good. As I was saying, Chalice is pretty strong. That's pretty good. Um, what can we... 
What can we go get? Crucible would be nice, but at this point it doesn't do anything. Ooh, this is a nice combo. Yeah, it, it flies, right? That's kind of dope. Uh, all right, so if I do play out the Thought Knot, yeah, I think I want to I wanna make sure that I resolve the Karn here. I think I want to make sure that I resolve the Karn, and I'm going to plus on nothing. I have uh, this member to kill this Nappy. Yeah, this, we're, we're just bullying them at this point. This one's interesting. I think I'm gonna go for the Sky Sovereign though. And because we have this member, I I can attack freely. I have full information, and I know that they can't clock my Karn. Yep. And now, yeah, and now even through a, uh, now we have an answer to whichever walker they could they could play. Um, we can <laughs> we can use the like the, they they need to answer the thought not here with a sweeper or something. And even if they do, we still have an active Karn. That was sweet. That was pretty sweet. Uh, now sideboard is gonna be interesting. Like how do we sideboard in the matchup? Do I keep things just the same? I definitely don't want ley lines. I'm I'm a little bit interested in Trinisphere. I think I'm going to leave everything as is, though. I could bring in the Spyglass, but I do like Karn being able to answer any Planeswalker. Uh, maybe actually I should do that. Alright, sweet. It worked. <clears throat> Let's see how we do now. Uh, so we have two thirds of Tron, Chalice, and El Carno, including double Eldrassi Temple. I imagine that you you kind of have to keep these kind of hands and they just hope that you magically draw into a thought not seer so we can play out on turn two is the drastic tron like actually good now is is this something? Is this the world we live in? Where Eldrassitron is just legit. I've always called Eldrassitron shitty Tron because it's worse than Tron under most circumstances. But we might be in a weird like this is what Hogak does to the format. It warps it and then like. 
strategies that were not like particularly insane or anything all of a sudden become more more powerful because of a positive Adrasi matchup a, a positive Hogak matchup uh... so I guess I lead him power plant because there is a possibility for me to to draw into to draw the mine naturally if I top deck a thought that's here right here of course I'm gonna feel dumb but stony I hadn't I hadn't seen this one in a while um yeah I feel like I, I feel like I want to chalice first and then try to then try to do something with this guy. Too bad that my my chalice's abilities cannot be activated. Bad beats. <laughs> Luis loves this card. <laughs> I mean with with good reason, right? Card is busted. Wow, that's brutal. That is insane. That is insane. So now the answer the chalice. And we're in a really bad spot here. Whew. Yeah. Ooh, ows, not even path. So I, I get literally nothing for my trouble. Yeah, I, I'm not loving our situation right here. So we have two options. We can play the Thought Knot to kind of like clear the way for the Endbringer. I think I'm going to do that. And we can clear the way for the Endbringer. Just draw no removal, please. No removal would be nice. Oh, they drew the Colonnade. Okay, so we know. We have public information. We have a perfect information I mean um, one two three four man this is this is kind of rough uh, Tormund's script and snare and bridge I kind of want to go get a snare and bridge or I can just plus uh, th there's no way I'm just going to just gonna play the send bringer And I guess they attack. No, I don't attack because if they draw a path, then that's super bad for me. Like they are the ones that are clocking me faster than I'm clocking them. So there's the island. Hopefully, this is a colonnade attack. Okay, that's cool. I can live with this. I can live with this. <laughs> Solid. Um, I think I'm going to attack with the Thought Knot. Pink here. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna take the thought note actually. I think I'm gonna draw a card. Yeah, no, no attacks. Um, I do play the ghost quarter, and we play the card. You could have like ceremonious rejection, I guess, but that's about it. I think it's gonna be like a ping, and then I'm gonna draw their end step. Pierce. 
Ha. Okay, so one damage to any target, kill that guy. And I think we do pay for this. They're going to be able to colonnade, attack the Karn, but they will need to draw a one mana spell in order to in order to kill the Karn. Uh, Airfan Ribas, thank you for that uh, follow. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I think we do pay here. And we plus on nothing. Okay. <clears throat> they can attack Karn if they want to. But this is fine. Karn goes down to two. And now end of turn I ping because value. Alright, sweet. Um hmm. I guess now I start drawing cards. A Jeff Hakolul. Sorry, I probably butchered your name. Uh, thank you for the follow. Nice. I like that. I like that. Uh huh. Plus on nothing. Go. And this Endbringer is going to start running away with the game. I, I guess that, yeah, I, I totally forgot about this Tony Silence. So I, I, I should have said plus on the Mind Stone. Should have 100% plus on the Mind Stone. I, I totally forgot that the that I was not going to be able to cantrip. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of insane. Like, this card is just absurd. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were drawing this. Sick. Uh, oh, thank you, a Jeff... Age of Jala Jokul. Age of Jala Jokul. There we go. Um, that's not it. Okay, so what do we want to play now? Uh, let's play some amulet, shall we? Uh, let's play... Yeah, let's play some amulet. So let's play some amulet against blue white. Ugh. Um. Not a great hand, but definitely keepable. Who is Salvato? Salvato is uh, the best Argentinian magic player currently. I guess I guess currently, but kind of because he was the best uh, the best ranked player in the world uh, when when the whole MPL thing made the pro points not matter anymore. So I guess he's now gonna be forever the best player. <laughs> he's going to be forever the best player from now on until eternity. I don't think I'm interested in playing out a garrison. And I'm definitely not getting the forest. So I guess I'm going to get the garrison, but I'm not going to play it out. I'm going to play out the Tolerate West instead. Uh, so the thing, what, what we don't want to see here is like a Deferi or something like that. I'm okay with seeing a pass. Pierce this. Alright. Kind of unfortunate that all my lands are entering the battlefield tapped. Timely. For a couple of 1-1s. Well, that's good news for me. 
Ah, oh, brutal. I deleted this Luis Salvato from GP Sao Paulo. It was incredible. What do you mean you... Oh, you defeated Luis Salvato. Yeah. Yeah, Luis is... Luis is pretty good. Luis is pretty good. Ugh, fourth mana found. Jeez. I really wish we could find an untapped land here. If we do find an untapped source, what I can do is I can play I can play Karn and Guess I can't. I I could minus for Python Needle, which is I think what I'm going to do anyway. Play with Valakut and he played with blue white. Yeah, Valakut uh Valakut usually like historically Valakut has a pretty good blue white matchup. Uh, right now, with with a blue white running main deck surgical because of because of Hogak and Dredge and stuff, it's things have gotten significantly worse. But I think it's still a fine matchup. Uh huh. Yeah, blue white is very very good currently. This is a good question here. Should I sacrifice the ballista to kill one of my opponent's soldiers? I think I do. I can con minus for explosives to blow up my opponent's board. Uh, this is not particularly bad for us. It's probably just fine. I don't need to find lands though. That is my priority my priority number one. Uh okay, that helps. Okay, so he goes at Karn and I'm going to chump. Something good? It's not necessarily something good. Um I mean, I miss my... I miss Crucible being in my sideboard. Stupid Kogak deck making me play Rest in Peace. Like, if, if we had access to... If we had access to... Um, to that card right here, we would be in a solid spot. Okay, so let's start here. Gonna name, of course, Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> yeah, Cass. Tomando revancha. Uh... I think I'm just gonna plus on nothing.
and then bounce the county garden. My plan here is for Luis to start to focus all of uh, his energy in trying to deal with the Karn, and then we just backdoor slam a Titan and we get them that way. Like for example, I, yeah, th like the best case scenario for us would have been something like, you know, play my my fifth land, like sixth land, I guess, and and uh, swing with Colonnade to kill the Karn. Okay, that that is actually pretty bad. Oh, and it's actually pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, Narset is fine. It's kind of annoying, but it's just fine. Manalik. Good to know about that one. Uh, good to know about that one for sure. Um... I really don't want to expose... I really don't want to expose the Python Needle to removal spell. But I kind of want to attack the Narset. The good thing is that if they do attack the Karn, then they, unless they have yet another land, they're not going to be able to hold up Manalik. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. Big yikes. Big yikes. <laughs> uh, well, that is significantly better than... <laughs> Than attacking with a colonnade. That is significantly better than attacking with a colonnade. Uh, you're too late. You're too late. Wow, now he even has access to the mana leak. Yeah, this. This is bad. This is very, very bad. This is very, very bad. Yeah, this is the price. This is the price that I'm paying for building my deck to be Ho to beat Hogak. Uh, if this had been a Crucible, we would be in such a better spot. Like I would have been able to like slam a Crucible when when Luis was stopped out uh, instead of the Python Needle, uh, and then we would have been able to like start basically never missing a land drop again. And then I would have happily traded my Karn for their Jace by getting a Python Needle with the second minus. And at this point, I don't think we're going to be able to win anymore. With three Planeswalkers, three active Planeswalkers, which is even worse. Um, I don't think that we're going to, to get there. Yeah, this really sucks. This really, really sucks. Yeah, yeah, we can probably concede at this point. <clears throat> Unless I drew exactly Cavernous Souls. It's brutal. That uh, is pretty brutal. Um, I want the Hornet Queen. Don't want the Crossroads. Don't want the Relic, and I don't want the third. I guess I'd rather have the two explosives. Like uh, Luis is playing a very, a very three mana heavy version of blue white with, uh, with multiple three mana walkers and with Mentor in the sideboard as we saw earlier. So I think that explosives is better against blue uh, against Luis's version of blue white than in than it normally is. 
and because uh, because they are because he's only playing a single detention sphere out of this uh, out of the main deck, I don't think that Rex Sage is gonna be the way to go. Rough. That's a that's a rough, rough game one. It sucks to lose to like, I basically lost to to Bridgevine right there, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say. It is a weird thing to say, but I firmly believe that we just lost to Bridgevine that that game one. Because if if I weren't playing Rest in Peace in my sideboard, which is not a card that I would want to be you know playing unless I had to, because you know, I'm trying to play around Bridgevine. Um, then I think we would have been in a much better spot. Yeah, these are not good draws. I need an untapped land here. <clears throat> Definitely need an untapped land. If I, if I manage to play a on 3, we're probably going to be in a fine spot. Cavern of Souls, of course, the best draw. Oh, I forgot to attack with the plant for value. Punt. Punt. Alright, untap source, and we're off to the races. Untap source. It's definitely not an untap source. Definitely not an untap source. I'm playing out the ballista because I want to have a way to try to um, to try to clock one of their walkers if if they play like a Teferi or something like that. I want to have access to a way to clock uh, to clock it. But we're not looking like insanely bad. We're just looking bad here. <laughs> we're looking just like reasonably bad, but not like insanely bad. Okay, that's a Narset, sweet. So this is why I chose to play out the Ballista when I did. It's because if they play one of these busted three mana walkers, now we actually have a way to clock it instead of, you know, just zero one plants. <laughs> <clears throat> Timely. Interesting. Play out Asusa because we don't really have many other options. Tuck Narset. I don't think I ping myself to deny them the life gain. I don't think that the life gain is going to be what this game will be about. I think this game is going to be more about like who's ahead. And uh, currently, I think that I am ahead but not by much, not by much. Like that Asusa was of course key because it allowed me to get ahead of mana, which otherwise I wouldn't be. <clears throat> Play two so you can tap bounce and spin it for something certain because I can still tap and bounce using the Simic Growth Chambers and this doesn't expose my Toleria West to a field of ruin. If my opponent feels the Tuluria West and they like surgical me or something, then I'm going to be, um, they stop my engine. So that's why I did what I did. Uh, great question though, Agent 56 key. Uh, definitely a good question. Yeah, we should have a lot of really good draws here. An amulet would be amazing. Um, amulet would be amazing. Uh, that's an untapped land. Does that do anything? Uh, Oriental Market, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. So we can have access to Transmute for Cavern. Uh, one, two, three, four. So I think I'm going to use this turn to play out my Karn. They might be able to Force of Negation this. 
Which would suck, of course, but it is what it is. Uh, that resolved. Sick. I definitely want to get value from this. So I think I'm going to minus... I don't need to minus for explosives. But I can minus for... I don't care. They don't have anything worthy in the graveyard, so Thermos Crypt doesn't make sense. Uh, I could get Worm Coil. Worm Coil would be kind of interesting. Play out all my lands here. I think I'm just going to get Pithing Needle. And I'm not going to play it right now because that would play directly into Spell Pierce. So I'm just going to like set up uh, an answer down the line for, uh, for, uh, for one of their walkers. If Luis wants to like main face uh, Cryptic tap my team in order to attack my Karn, that'd, that'd be great. Uh, and I'll definitely sack the Ballista to that. Uh, in order to help my current survive. Yeah, at any point in time, Amulet would have been pretty good. At this point, Amulet doesn't really do much. But next turn, I can transmute for a Cavern of Souls. Which could be pretty strong. Alternatively, I can transmute for Pact of Negation. This is how the blue-white matchup needs to play out, basically. Um, this is how you want the blue-white matchup to, to play out. Uh, you want to get ahead, and you want to stay ahead, basically. So, one, two, three, transmute, one, two, so I can... I can lattice with packed backup. Which is pretty cool. Should we lattice with packed backup? Is that the play? An untapped source would be nice because that would mean... Uh, I guess I can still do this. So we lead on needle. This is basically something to... Mind Sculptor. Um... Yeah, I guess I minus for Lattice. I'm gonna lead two blue floating. No, 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 I'm doing this on purpose. I, I don't know whether I want to get Pact of Negation yet. And this allows me to, like, now I can transmute for Pact of Negation safely, right? Because um, otherwise, if I... Let's say that I transmute for Pact of Negation and my opponent has Spell Beers, right? So I did this on purpose, Cubic. In fact, I talked about I have enough mana to transmute for, for Pact of Negation. And then I came back on my thought because that would have played directly into Spell Pierce. And then I'm forced into pacting of, Pact of Negationing, I guess. I, I'm forced to like Pact a Spell Pierce, which I, th the way that I played, I can play around the Spell Pierce easily. And like the only way that, that uh, Luis can get out of it is if they force of negation the lattice, which would exile the lattice. So I can set up the lattice lock for, the, for a couple of turns down the road. So I think it's 100% correct. Uh, what I did was correct. I, I, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how I play that game. So don't worry, I got you. I got you. You don't, you don't need to worry. Uh, anything I want to change? I don't think so. I would like to change my least period, honestly. Like, I would like to not be playing these stupid resting pieces, but it is what it is.
And again against uh, Luis's list, uh, I think that playing Hornet Queen is correct because uh, post board it's very likely for him to go kind of ham on um, on Vendillion Click and uh, Monastery Mentor. This hand is very good, by the way. In case you guys decided to figure that out, this hand is very good. Day Multi Six. I'm kind of happy that the that the Vancouver, the Vancouver Mulligan is is gone, and we have the London Mull now. Ooh, that's sweet. So now the only way to counter the amulet is going to be for them to force it. Which is great for me. Because it's going to be a 2 for 1. And also, oddly enough, because I'm playing Karn in my deck, amulet getting exiled is great for me because it allows me to minus for it if I want to. So that is pretty sweet. Uh huh. Uh, do I want to play a suicide into Manalik? I think I don't. Very interesting hitting my land drops here. And if I play a Susa and they Manalik it, then I am going to be in a really rough spot because, uh, like, for the Asusa play to make sense, I need to play the Celestia Sanctuary and bring it back to hand. And if I do, then I am one land drop behind. Um, so, yeah, not not great. Not great for us. Uh, probably gonna find a Karn here. And then steer again. Sick. A bounce land. That's exactly what I was looking for. It kind of sucks that now they know that I have a threat. But, eh. Field of Ruin. Okay, that guy's fine. Are they planning on... on doing this now? Now they're gonna force? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, that was that was that was pretty sick. Um, they know about this, and I don't really care about getting this one fielded, so this is fine. If they field this one, this is that's okay. This is the one that I wouldn't want them to field because that's my green source right there. I imagine they do field here. They know about this Garn. So I'm gonna put it all the way here. I usually like to organize my hand by mana cost. And then usually the known cards, I keep them over here. Or if my opponent thought sees me thought sees me or something, I keep like all the known cards and all the unknown cards over here. I guess this would be like the correct way to put it. This is a card that they know about, and they don't know about this. All right, them tapping out there is just great for us, because now I'm going to safely be able to resolve Asusa. We're going to be able to play Sanctuary, and I think that I'm going to go for Toleria West here. I don't care very much if they feel this, and the cool part about this is that... Spell beers. Uh, the cool part about this is that it's it's going to like entice my opponent to field here instead of here or here. When in reality I really want to have access to explosives on three to blow up my opponent's board. So hopefully they will That's pretty good. Um this is fine. All 
right. Um, so they have spell beers. So what I can do is I can just like attack the Deferi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if they pierce my pact, I'm gonna be in trouble. So I think I want to either attack the Teferi. I can also explosives on three. I like that. Nice. This is why I didn't play my lands pre-combat, is because this way it entices Luis to pierce um to pierce there to tap me out and get one more turn. Now we get to play both of our lands. And now we get to attack them. And Asusa did an amazing job. And it's time for her to go. It's a two for two, but still pretty solid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana in play. Um, got Cavern on Giant, which is nice. <clears throat> oh, he passed. All right. Let the Titan Parade begin. And they know that they need to counter this because, all right, so that's no counter spell. One, two, three, four, five, six. And counter will prime, prime time. Nice disdainful stroke. Ugly art, disdainful stroke. Come on, Luis. You know better. I don't really care about my opponent's graveyard, so I don't think the bog in is going to be necessary. I think I'm going to go with double cynic. Protect the cavern. Protect Toleria and set up the next Titan for next the following turn. If they pass the Titan, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, Snapcaster, flashing back, opt, I guess. I like my spot. I like my spot. They bought on there. <clears throat> All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Top two mana, maybe not. Prime time is so sick. I love this card. In case, in case you amazing viewers had not figured out, I love this card. <laughs> What's up, downright? How you doing? Uh, we're playing against Luis. We we played with uh, we played with Hogak and we beat him 2-0. We played with Eldrassitron and we beat him 2-0 or 2-1. I can't remember. And then now we're playing some amulet and we're currently one and one in games. This is game three. We're doing great. We're doing great. Today is gonna be my last stream before uh, before going to Argentina for the next uh, week and a half. So ooh, okay. Alright, things uh, things get exciting here. Things get exciting here. Uh, I definitely need to answer this dude. Fortunately, I already have an answer in my hand, so that's cool. They left the card on top, so I guess they did find the land they were looking for. All right, so we pay for Pact. Go to combat, swing, yes. 
And now we're going to... I guess we want more mana. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because we're going to make Cavern on Construct. <clears throat> so we already have a T-West already uh, set up and good to go. What is important right here? At this state of the game, I think important is going to be to set up my defenses and not get cheesed out by this by this monastery mentor. If they want to block here, they can do it. They don't, okay. Um, so now I can choose to play around... I can choose to play around Ceremonious Rejection. I don't think I want to. And I'm definitely going to make this Ballista for 3 because I can, I can kill this Mentor and I'm going to kill this Mentor right now. All right, sweet. Yeah, now I think we're in a, we're in a very commanding position. Now I think we're in a very commanding position. Um, it's not so much so much of a vacation. It's more that my wife's dad is getting married, so we're going over there for the ceremony and stuff. So it is, let's say, a forced vacation. <laughs> Some kind of forced vacation, uh, the tension sphere. This is perfectly fine. All right, they're probably gonna go after the prime time. I have one explosive left in the main, and I there's one explosive in my sideboard. Yeah, they do go after the titan. Just bring comp stream from Argentina easy. <laughs> now, no attacks is interesting there. Uh, well, I know that they have a disdainful stroke. I think we're just gonna get that chain going. Start here, because if they want to, like if they use their removal here, then they cannot use the removal there. Uh, we're going to have prime time. We're going to name giant. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is cool. Vesuva. They still don't really have anything in the graveyard that I do care about. So we're going to do just like Tolaria Bounce. Yeah, just Tolaria Bounce to, to set up the next prime time at following turn. And I guess on their upkeep, I'm going to put a counter on the Ballista. Oh, they found the path? Oh, no, the opt. Okay. I would put a counter. And I guess I want to... I guess I don't want to ping. Well, this doesn't This doesn't really matter. They can have a 2-2 two -two if they want to. This guy's probably going to be better than their 2-2. Two -two. Dredge had this in night when 3-1 and one only lost to Burn. Yeah, Burn... Isn't, isn't Burn like a really good matchup for Dredge now? Because of the Creeping Chills? So what I'm expecting here is like a Wrath effect. Which would be fine, I think. Oh, Jace. I don't care very much about that one.
Yeah, because now they can't answer the prime time, right? Because if they answer the prime time, I just lock them out with Karn. Because I have like insane, ridiculous amounts of mana, yep. Yep, so even if they find a path to exile there, or like a second land, then they can deal with both the prime time and the Karn in hand. Uh, so that is, as you can see, that's the key to the matchup. You need to get ahead, and usually your ways to get ahead are Asusa and, uh, and the Scout. Those are your your best friends. Uh, we can probably play one quick... Alright, Luis says that he's done. <laughs> he says... <laughs> He said that he's good, but he, that we saved him 10 tickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he says he's having a friend over to drink some mate, so... So yeah, that's cool. Uh, that was That was great, that was a good time. That was a good time, I enjoyed playing against... Um, against him uh, all right yeah so that was awesome um I will be I will uh, take like a half hour break I guess I will be I have like a, any an important phone call at 4 p.m and as soon as that is over I will be back and we're gonna be playing some amulet druid hopefully this will be the best the last time that I play that I play this deck on stream. And I say hopefully, because that means that um, Hogak will be banned. So definitely looking forward to Hogak being banned and not needing to play like two Rest in Peace and two Tormod Scripts in my sideboard. Uh, but yeah, so definitely expect me to be back around 4.20, 4.30-ish. And we will be playing a, um, a League of Amulet Druid. This is the list that I've been, that I've been working with. Uh, I've seen uh, somebody make the suggestion of playing uh, post-mortem lunch in the spot of the one of Strive Scouts, so that is something that I, I'm interested in giving a shot to. I am not sure whether it's going to be particularly good. In fact, it could be a little bit bad, simply, because it, it, it does take out one of our ramp slots, right? So uh, I don't think I'm particularly excited about that. Uh, but I will give it a shot, you know, just like just like it always we always do here. I really don't think I'll get banned before London Mulligan. What well, the the the, 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 the the London Mulligan? It's it's actually live right now. In fact, what we played uh, today was using the London Mulligan. So, so yeah, uh, we will be back then in about thirty minutes, forty minutes maybe. So stay tuned and expect uh, expect another notification if you're part of the Discord. Um, if you want to join the Discord, you can use this link, by the way. And if you are part of the Discord, you will definitely get uh, notified again with another another tag to let you know that um, yeah, that uh, to let you know that that I'm going live. And this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, thanks to everybody for hanging out. If you would like to subscribe, you can. Wow, this is just. I guess that MTG bot is down. That has to be it, because I'm using like all my commands and none of them are working. So I think that MTG bot is just like, it's just not working. Yep, definitely. Okay, uh, too bad. <laughs> I will be back in about, uh, as I was saying, in about 40 minutes or so. So see you all uh, in a few. Uh, we can do like a, qu a quick uh, raid, or uh, yeah, let's do a raid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, let's let's go for Nasif. Yellow hat, yellow hat. All right. See you all uh, very soon in about, as I was saying, 30, 40 minutes. So thank you for hanging out and have a, have a, good, a good next half hour. <laughs> I will be back. Have a good one. Bye-bye.